huge. Time right here too. Yeah. <coughs> Why well, get started? All right, guys, we'll go ahead and get started. I know it's kind of ending the day here. So um, this talk is security guards, LOL. Uh, we're not here to just bash security guards, but this has happened a number of times when we've done on-site uh, covert social engineering or physical security assessments where uh, the security guard vendors, uh, their lack of security awareness is, is kind of shocking at times. And it's become so prevalent that we're like, we need to talk about this. So here we go. Yeah, it's got to the point where when we go on site to do these uh, social engineering assessments and stuff, we actually look for security guards and kind of actually kind of target them now because of this. So hopefully this will bring some insight of, of some issues. So who are we? Uh, my name is Brent White, Tim Roberts, and we are security consultants at NTT Security, and then our uh, very professional explanations of what we do, I think. And you can't triple stamp or double stamp, so. All right, so uh, scoping requirements. You know, when would you do this? Uh, whenever you're doing a pen test, as I'm sure several of you guys know, you know, your scope needs to be defined. The client needs to decide, hey, what are the concerns here? What are the risks? But outside of the technical stuff, even the departments, you know, is this department more prevalent to social engineering attacks? Do they contain PHI in their cabinets and all this other stuff? Uh, where are the primary areas of concern? It's not always just, hey, let's get in and see if we can get into the data center and get out. Uh, granted, if you do that, then you're pretty much set. But it's not always uh, uh, us versus them, the red versus blue. You know, there's collaboration where the blue side may need to say, hey, we've got some regular issues from this, this department or this area. Uh, can you guys take a look at this? Or even the security guards. Um, you know, we have some issues where the security guards are sitting there knitting or on the phone. Literally or knitting a blanket. No, yes. This is not a joke. So uh, one of the things that you want to make sure to discuss with the client before you go in, uh, you know, can we touch stuff? Can we, if we see a workstation uh, that's not being watched or it's unlocked, can we jump on that and uh, see what information can we get? If we get into the server room and there's a, you know, something that looks nice, like a, even a server, can we, can we take stuff out of the building? You, know, you just always want to verify what's in scope. Um, you, know, you want to make sure that you also talk about start and stop time. Uh, it's always a bad thing if the client thinks that you're going to be finished Friday morning but you think that you're able to go in after hours on Friday night and you get caught and they're freaking out because they thought you were already on a plane on your way back home. You know, who the hell is this that's breaking into our building? So, uh, and this goes into legal documents. So if you're doing this, you want to make sure that you always have what we call the get out of jail free card or your letter, letter of authorization. That way, if you do get caught, you can say, uh, you know, here, please read this. You know, don't, don't lock me up. So, and then after all that's done, are we good to go? Have you covered all your bases and now you can actually start the assessment? So. Incident response testing. <clears throat> Is this part of the assessment? We we're talking about the scope earlier, but you know, do you want to see how they respond? Are they escalating properly? Um, you know, I've had several times where I use a fake letter of authorization. It'll have like fishtail security, blah, blah, blah. Then it'll have Brent's number on the bottom as a point of contact for the client. And these security guards will just glaze over this letter if we are caught. Hey, we're good to go. Hey. And then they think that they're in on it. So it's like, hey, I'm, I'm with security. I'm doing an assessment. And then they look at, oh, that's cool. Yeah, I'm with security too. And oh, yeah, okay. Well, yeah, that's and then good your buddies to go. for life. And then your buddies, and then you don't have to worry about the security guards because, and then I, I've gone an extra step and said, hey, can you make sure you let the other security guards know that, you know, I'm doing this? That way they don't bug me. And, and the, oh, yeah, you're, you're good to go. And they don't follow up. They don't look at the number. They don't look at the point of contact to see if it's legitimate or not. It's a free pass, basically, from there on out when that happens. So. so a good way to test that is always like the fake letter of authorization. I think Jason Street talks about that quite a bit, too. And uh, it's just a good way to test to see if they're following proper incident handling procedures. So the first story, uh, we got a couple more stories we're going to share with this uh, relevant to the security guards. Um, this particular client, I think, was a financial institute. We had piggybacked in, we gained access, we had some fake badges. 
But I was walking around and I found out where the data center was. It was downstairs and next to it was the security guard station where he had the CCTV, the cameras, the, the I think it was like Honeywell security system and everything else. And he's sitting there talking to a maintenance guy. So I'm like, man, I wonder what I can do here. So I walk over and look at the security or look at the data center, how it's uh, the entry. It's biometric. So I'm like, well, I, I can't really do anything with that right now. And uh, so I thought I would just ask the security guard. Hey, I'm going to grab this clipboard that was hanging next to it because they had the visitor log hanging on the ex external part. So I just took the paper out, flipped it over, pretended I was taking some inventory. Walked over to the security guard and the maintenance guy. I was like, hey, you know, I just need to get some serial numbers off of this. We're upgrading the systems. I was like, okay, yeah, no problem. Okay, cool. So I started writing down the serial number on the security systems. He's like, yeah, I hope you guys upgrade those because because it's been giving me some troubles. And I was like, oh yeah, what kind of troubles? Well, camera two and three, they go out. Uh, you know, it's not HD. And he starts telling me all these issues that he has. And I was like, oh, could you show me? So he logs into the system, 1111 is the password. And so I'm watching him. I like, are you serious right <laughs> now? And, and I was like, can you tell me what other issues you've had? And so we begin establishing this, this rapport. I look at the maintenance guy and I was like, hey, I need to get into the data center because I need to write a couple serial numbers off of that as well. Uh, could you help me out? And he looks at me and he looks at the security guard and the guard's like, I could do it. Okay, cool. So the security guard goes over to the scanner, authenticates, lets me in on its corded, and I'm in the data center now walking around doing whatever I want to. So it's a, there's a problem there, um, obviously, because I don't have access to the data center. And there's a visitor sign in. I mean, they're supposed to be escorting me if I'm a contractor, but I had a fake badge. And actually, for a joke, I've been using the name Elliot Alderson on my fake badge. And so I, uh, I had that, had my picture, and he just let me in and do whatever I wanted to. So it's always important that, that this improv and, and just thinking on the fly, too, because if you do get to a situation where it's like, oh, no, I can't get in here because this is beyond my skill level or this is whatever, that you're able to, to think on the fly and kind of adjust your story or, or whatever um, at that point. And so uh, continuing on to that, um, a war story, one of my assessments when it was a, a large client and it was a new location for them. So like, okay, that's cool. It's a pretty large building. So I did my recon the first day, walked around, um, wasn't really sure what the badges looked like anymore because it had been a while. So I uh, sat at a cafe that was adjacent to the building and uh, there were people in there early in the morning having coffee and breakfast. And so while I'm looking at their badges, I have Photoshop open at the table right next to them trying to duplicate the badge. Uh, and so that worked out pretty well. I just walked across the street, printed it off at the hotel, and stuck it in a badge sleeve and went back to the facilities. Uh, we walk in and I realize, okay, this is just a suite on one floor of like a five or six story building. So it went from a large building to me now to one room or one level with a single entry point that required a badge. Uh, I didn't have a badge. My only option was the doorbell. So um, ring the doorbell. Security guard came over and opened the door. Uh, yes, I'm, uh, I am John Draper. I'm here from IT security to do some system updates. Uh, and she glanced at my badge and, you know, told, and she's like, well, who are you again? I was like, well, I'm John Draper. And, uh, and so I was like, well, I need to come in and just do some secure some updates to the system and also some inventory. Uh, so she let me in and then I did the whole, hey, I'm new here. They just sent me up from corporate. Do you happen to know where the server room is? She's like, oh, yeah, it's right over here. I'm like, well, that's good because I have no idea where it's at. So uh, she takes me over, unlocks the door, and so, hey, it's going to take me a while. Uh, system updates can take some time as well as inventory. Is it okay if I just come to your desk and get you when I'm finished? She's like, oh, yeah, that's great. I'm sitting right over there. So she leaves me all alone in the server room. So I'm plugging in, running responder and grabbing hashes. I'm also looking at other sensitive information and storing that. Uh, about an hour, hour and a half later, you know, I had plenty of evidence to go off of. So walked out and was like, hey, um, I'm done in there. I don't know if you wanted to lock that back for me. Uh, and by the way, those offices, uh, whose office is that? And she's like, oh, that's the CISO's office, but he's on vacation. Like, oh, well, I really need to inventory the stuff in his office. Oh, okay, so she opens the door for me. We continue that every locked office on that floor. She opened it for me, and then she starts asking me, well, do you need to get in that office back there? That's for uh, HR and finance, and they uh, think they were out on some uh, 
professional field trip or whatever that means. So, uh, so she let me in there, um, spent some time in there. When I was finished, I uh, thanked her so much for her time, asked her if she had any questions for me, and then she started explaining to me issues that she had heard from employees as far as uh, systems that weren't working or passwords that needed to be updated and just starts divulging all this information to me. So uh, long story short, I just walked out of the building, called the client and let them know that uh, it was great for me and terrible for them. You know, and oftentimes I think just listening helps. You know, you don't even have to have a, you know, a in-depth guys, you're not going in and saying, oh yeah, blah, 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 here's this, this, and this. Um, sometimes you just need to have a fake badge around your neck, say, hey, I'm here to do inventory. They're not going to ask what kind of inventory. I mean, this has happened a lot where you just say, hey, I need to do this or that, and they're like, oh, okay, and they glance at your badge. They don't follow up. And <clears throat> the thing is, and, and something you're going to see uh, with these stories is um, the security guards that you're, you're hiring, if you're a client or whatever, if you have a contractor, a company come in, you know, hey, these are the guys that, this is your first la la layer of defense, and you're paying them to be that, right? And you're paying them so that they can secure your facility from people not coming in that's not supposed to come in. And so it's really important that you test their response and how they handle this, and do they just, you know, go in. I mean, if you're just there for a network pen test or an application pen test, you know, take one step further and ask them, ask the client, hey, can I just try to walk in tomorrow instead of signing in and doing whatever? Oh, well, yeah. I mean, you can even just take that extra little step and, and it'll open up a lot of uh, awareness, I think. Yeah, and something else I want to mention, too, a lot of these assessments at the end after we've, you know, had the closeout meeting and everything, the clients most, think probably 90, 99% of the time admit hey, the security company, we have them because they are the cheapest. They're basically the bottom of the barrel security company. And so you get people in there that just really don't care. Uh, you know, always say, you know, you get what you pay for. And as Tim mentioned, you have these security guards that they are the first people that you see basically when you're entering a building. Uh, there are also issues of very large buildings that have one security guard and he's supposed to take care of all that. And there are several entrances. that that doesn't really work out, especially if you have a team of, say, Tim and I and then a few other guys we work with. If we're distracting the security guard in the front, that leaves all the other entrances potentially open for us to, you know, potentially piggyback or pick or other, in, other ways to get in that door. So just make sure that, uh, you know, it's people that know what your, tra like what your policies are and they follow that, and then, you know, that they're actually a, a decent security company. And so, again, with these stories, too, uh, you know, there are alternate ways to get into the facility. You're not always going to encounter a security guard. So this is for those times where you have to go into the front or the, they have staff going around looking or, or whatever. Uh, in this story, it's pretty funny. Um, there was only a single point of entry. Uh, the back door had cameras and a bunch of other stuff. It was also where delivery was. So it was, it was difficult to go in the back door. So we went in the front. When we did, we just walked by the security guard because they were distracted by someone else. Uh, talking to them. I think an employee had forgot their badge. Well, overheard them talking about employee one day badges. I was like, oh, well, that's interesting. So we're walking around. We see uh, the security control room. And this is, again, where they control everything. It's where they printed their badges and all this good stuff. Um, we go by there, just try to pick the lock. Well, the year before, we had went in there and they had like some generic tumbler lock, able to pick it. We got in. Well, this one they had upgraded, I think, some dimple locks, yeah. and there was a lot of traffic coming in and out. So it's like, oh, you know, we need to rethink this. So go up to the security guard. I pull out a key. I had my bump keys on me, I think. I pull out a key and I tap it on the desk, and Brent's over there just talking to him too. And she's like, oh, can I help you? And I was like, hey, yeah, uh, John from facilities gave me this key. I'm doing key inventory, and I need to get in the security control room. My key's not working. He said, you might be able to help me out. Uh, maybe. Well, can I borrow your keys? I'll bring them right back. Oh, sure. They give me the hard keys. Take the hard keys, go down there, we get in. It was good enough. Yeah, you also said, hey, uh, well, here are my keys. If oh, it makes yeah, you feel yeah. better, I'll leave them with you and then come pick them up. And it was like a generic set of bump keys that that uh, you carry around with you all the time, too. She was like, oh, sure, I'll keep your keys. Yeah, yeah, so she let me do that. She was like, oh, just make sure you bring them back before 6 because I need to lock up the facility. I'm like, oh, yeah, sure, great, whatever. 
So I leave, I go down there, we get into the security control room. Uh, in there, we were able to pick an aluminum box that has some generic, I think it was like a tumbler lock or, or wafer lock. Yeah, it was wafer. We were able to get into this aluminum box that had all their hard keys for not only their buildings, but also for their, uh, their company vehicles. So they had company vehicles parked outside. They had all this stuff. And I was like, are you serious every, right now? Every key. Every key. And so we weren't allowed to take the keys. So what did I do is I, I found one of the shiny keys, the server key, took a picture of it, a nice clear picture. And I was like, you know what? We're going to go by Lowe's after this and we'll see if we can hand file this key and see if it'll work at the next facility the next day. Um, but that's not the funny part. I mean, that's funny. But the real funny part is when I came back, I started asking, oh, yeah, here's the key, blah, blah, blah. Um, what can you tell me about your RFID, your badge, your proximity badge uh, process? How do you guys do that? Because I had overheard them talking about the employee one day badge. And so she starts telling me, she pulls out this big thick binder. It's got all these contractor badges, one day employee badges, all this stuff in it. And I was like, oh, nice. So I had this uh, clipboard with me, a nice little RFID thief. No, no, I don't think they can see. Yeah. So it's got three different sensors you can plug and play, USB and Raspberry Pi. But I had this on me, had it turned on, and I just set it down. I had a piece of paper, and I start taking the badges out of the binder. And I'm just sitting there, and I swipe like 15 badges, and she doesn't say anything. Brent's distracting her, talking to her about, I don't know, whatever it was you were talking about. But I'm yeah, sitting there this whole time. The silly thing is is that when uh, he started this, and he's, he's taking the ID. Let me see the clipboard really quick. And so he's sitting there behind the desk, and he'll, he's going like this with the badges. <laughs> like rubbing I'm them. just making and sure then, I'm getting them. And so. then <laughs> underneath, too. And while he's talking to the lady, yeah. Yeah, I got, and then he'd like stop and act like he was writing something down and moving around again. It, it was not discreet at all. And so while I'm talking to her, I was like, Tim, that's a lot of badges. That's going to take a while. And so she then says, oh, do you want to come over here? There's a seat. So uh, Tim goes around, sits behind the counter. We get a picture of him with the full binder with his feet propped up on the desk. Just I was being the, com completely I, absurd just to see how far I could push this before they questioned me. Yeah, I'd say there's probably, what, 50 badges in that binder yeah. at least? Yeah, and I got about 15 or 20 uh, of them scanned, which was hilarious. Yeah, so it was, that was such a mess. It was hilarious, though. You know, and, uh, and we talk, uh, we've kind of got the listed here, the tools utilized. The under-the-door tool, um, you know, if you're still using uh, lever handles and you've got a big gap under your door and it's a sensitive area, stop. Yeah. Because, uh, because I mean, sitting there, especially after hours, and you've already kind of, uh, you know, exploited the the security guard, and you don't have to worry about them bugging you. You can sit there and do whatever you want to, essentially. And so, using the under the tool or tool, even though if it's loud or whatever, uh, you know, we were able to get into. I think it was like the PBX closet, some wiring closets and stuff. Not Does as big. Does anybody in here not know what an under the door tool is? Raise your hand. That guy. Cool. I've, I've got that in a crash bar tool and a few other things that we use. If you're interested in seeing them or how they work uh, after our talk, I'll come up here and I'll show you real quick. No, sorry, Tim. Oh, no problem. I think we're good on that one. Okay. So um, this is another one of my favorite war stories. And the reason is uh, this was another client that had a suite on a floor, a shared building. And so um, we went in there during the day to see. We had figured out who who managed their printers. And so we walked in saying, you know, hey, we're here. Uh, we were just doing uh, just a quick maintenance on a few of your printers. So we were able to figure out, you know, where the receptionist was, the doors, the entrances, and all that. So uh, we went back after hours. The elevator was blocked off to that level because, you know, you had to have badge access. We didn't have badges because this was a, you know, really kind of a quick assessment. So anyway, we... Um, we found a side door. We went up, and they had a Kava style lock with you know the four pin, the four uh, one, two, three, four that you push. Um, we didn't have a magnet. magnet. Yeah, we didn't have a magnet with us to bypass it because we weren't. Again, it was quick. It's probably uh... anyway. We we started guessing, and we know people love patterns. And so on our sixteenth attempt, we figured out the code. We opened the door, went in there, and we're walking around. Uh, there was some cleaning crew. We just you know we didn't have fake badges on or anything. We're just walking around. Uh, they didn't ask us anything. Of course, why would they, right? The cleaning crew, they don't really care about the security generally. Uh, so we were walking around. You know, we picked some locks and shredder bins, got some sensitive information. We took our time. I'd say we were in there for probably close to two hours. We were told that a security guard monitors 
uh, the cameras after hours from a building nearby. So we were trying to give them the benefit of the doubt. We were taking our time. We basically went through every cubicle, lifting up keyboards and finding you know passwords written on post-its and, and other things like that, which that's a terrible hiding place. If you write your password on post-it, stop. And if you don't stop, don't hide it under your keyboard. We always look there. Um, so we were walking around, and we decided, OK, with these, the, the double glass doors, the main entrance, there was a pretty big gap in there. So we wanted to see if we could trip the, uh, the REX sensor from the other side. So uh, I had a clothes hanger in my back pocket and some tissues from Starbucks, just to see, right? So uh, we're standing here in the main entrance. I'm tying tissues to a coat hanger. And we push it through the gap of the door. And I'm like doing this up and down really big to try and get it to trip. Uh, nobody came. So I'm like, OK, let's walk around some more. So finally, uh, at the end of this, we'd had it. We, we, basically, we were literally doing jumping jacks to the camera at the main entrance to try and get someone's attention. And no one ever showed up. So that was a total security guard fail uh, in that situation. So, you know, in the coat hanger, like I think it was a couple of weeks ago, we uh, bypassed one of those sensors too with just canned air, mm -hmm. and the canned air was laying around the facility. So it's like, all right, well, I don't have to go to you know the office store after after this and come back. So even looking around, you know, if you don't have a coat hanger in your back pocket, you know, looking around at other things, if you vape or whatever, you know, Dave Kennedy talks about using the vape to bypass those. So there's different ways of doing it. Oh yeah. So let's see. Let's say uh, you're doing your assessment and you get compromised. So, uh, Tim, you, you're the big fan of the letter of authorization, the fake one, so <clears throat> talk about that. Yeah, you know, um, oftentimes, like I said, that you're able to use this fake letter of authorization and kind of get the security guards on your side because they're security too. And uh, you're doing your thing, but what if it doesn't work? Because it hasn't worked. I, I mean... I, if Brent's been been compromised. I, I've been fine using the fake letter, but, <laughs> <laughs> but you know, Brent one time uh, a security guard, you know, they caught him. He tried to use it. He tried to use a badge. You know, sometimes if we don't have time to clone an RFI or a badge, or we don't have the right sensor or something like that uh, to make a, a duplicate, then you just have to go to a printer and get a good idea of what it looks like and print off one, put it in one of those plastic sleeves and mm -hmm. whatever, or just flip a, one over and just show the blank side. Um, so Brent, I think, had a, had a, had one, and a security guard came up to him. He's like, let me see your badge. And this has happened to me where I've had to give the fake letter. Let me see your badge. Oh. No, take it out. Oh. You know, and then you're just like, well, do I run right now? What's going on? So you take it out, and then they rip it up in front yeah, of your face. Yeah, rips and, it up. Yeah. And like, oh, that looked really good. <laughs> yeah, I spent a lot of time on that. Yeah. So, so the same jerk. thing for the fake letter of authorization. They look at that, and oftentimes, who the heck is... You know, Tom White, yeah. uh, that's not our CISO, or that's not our, you know, whoever. Uh, and then they rip it up in front of you, and sometimes they'll take you or whatever. Yep. Um, but, you know, that's where you're testing those. I mentioned before the incident response stuff, the escalation procedures. What are they doing? How are they following up? Do they just rip it up? We were uh, on a site, on site one time, and I think someone either recognized the name Elliot Alderson or whatever on my fake badge, but he took it. That was last week. Yeah, last week. Travel too much. Um, so he took it, and he uh, he didn't ask anything after that. He just said, that's not a real badge. Yeah, he just came and said, you don't work here. Uh, let me see your badge. And so Tim's like, here it is. Yeah, That's not a real badge. Let me have it. Yep. Yeah. And he took it, and he ripped it up, and that's all he did. And he walked away. From, he just left us there. And that's when we were, we were it was <laughs> the dumbest thing. And so we can't tell you what we nicknamed the, that guy after that. It was pretty funny. But um, this was while we were doing the canned air. And I mean, it's a pretty big entrance from this lobby. A lot of employees were in and out. You've got guys standing there spraying canned air through the door just to see. And he's like, and he just walks off. Well, yeah, thank you for your anything. diligence. So he actually kind of screwed himself more than uh, helping himself with that whole right. situation. So, and you know, uh, also their escalation procedures. Do they escalate to somebody internally? Is there a facilities guy they call? Do they call a supervisor? There's a main security guy who. Because uh, sometimes people will call the police or whoever. Oh, there's somebody here, and then it becomes a nasty situation. Yeah. Um, 
fortunately, that hasn't happened uh, with any of us, but you know, I know some people, like some colleagues, that that's happened to, and it's, it's, it's hard sometimes when the police are sitting there asking you stuff, and you're trying to say, I'm supposed to be here, and you're giving them a real fake letter, and, and they're not able to get a hold of that point of contact or whatever, so make sure that you always have the point of contact information, cell numbers, and not just one person, but multiple people, because there are situations where you know, they may be really busy, and you're not able to get a hold of or them. Or on vacation. That seems to happen all the time. Like, oh, yeah, they're on vacation this week. And like, well, who the hell else am I supposed to call? You know, I don't want to go to jail today. So maybe tomorrow, but not today. So something else in that letter, when you're doing the kickoff call, make sure that you put language in there that says that that company will go to any means to make sure that you are not apprehended by any local or federal law enforcement. Because then if, if that does happen, then it really comes back on them legally and nobody wants to get involved legally with anything, right? So just make sure that you have language in there to support that. You know, and if your lies keep stacking up and they're not buying it at all, just come clean. You know, don't, don't push it too much or try to run. Uh, I know some people, you know, oh, I do parkour, I'm awesome, and they try to run away, and then, you know, it's, that's bad, right? Bad, yeah. Uh, you're supposed to be there, they've caught you, they've done their due diligence, there's no need to, to try to outrun the, the security guard that you know probably has a bad knee or something. Yeah, and, and something else, too, it's even though you're there to see what you can do, also, you know, give them the benef benefit of the doubt, give them a chance to actually catch you. That way, you know, uh, we keep talking about Jason Street because he's incredible at this stuff, but he even mentions, you know, let them, let them catch, catch you. That way you can say, hey, good job. You guys are doing this right. So, uh, you know, give them a chance. There, there are times where we'll go do an assessment and no one says anything. And then, like I mentioned earlier, we'll go back in and say, okay, let's see what, what links we have to go to before someone actually says, hey, I don't think you're supposed to be here. And, uh, and then hopefully they follow through. And, cause, so. you know, even doing that is a, is a finding in, a, in and of itself. Because if they're not, you know, doing their due diligence and their job, and you have to keep trying, you've got to wear bright colors and do jumping jacks in front of the camera or be completely absurd in order to get them to do anything, that's a problem because real thieves aren't going to do that, right? They're going to go get in, do their thing, and get out. They're not going to sit there and say, you know what, I'm going to go in again and see if this guy does anything just to troll this security guard. Yeah, let's that go do yoga work. in the lobby. Right. So, yeah, parkour fail there. Yeah. Yeah, as terrible as that is, I guarantee you're going to stare at that the whole time this slides up while we're talking. So, And again, it hurts every time. I don't know. So your bug out exit strategy. Uh, again, you know, running away from them is probably not the best idea, but sometimes you've got to get out in a hurry. Uh, a good story um, that Brent and I experienced recently. Brent had come up with a discussion. He's like, you know what? I've got a name of somebody, their hiring person, uh, that does all their interviews. I'm going to use that name. I'm going to dress up in a suit and pretend I went there and see if they can plug this malicious uh, USB in yep. um, and have them print off my resume. So he had like a PDF. I think he had like a reverse uh, TCP yeah, it was a reverse interpreter. payload so in it. We had a guy, Kelly Carell, that we work with that he had set up the callback server and he was all like, all right, man, get ready. He was like, I'm ready. So I just imagine him, you know, just staring at his monitor just waiting for it. So, uh, so yeah, uh, one of the locations, that this client had three different locations and so the first location we were at, I was hanging out in the lobby, and they were doing a group interview. And so I was sitting there, and uh, Drew Culbertson that we work with went over, and he was like, hey, I've got a buddy that's needing a job. Can I get an application or your card? So uh, the lady gives him her card, and so that's, I was like, all right, I'm going to name drop. I'm going to use this. And so I uh, put a suit on. I hate wearing suits, by the way, but just, uh, put a suit on. We went to this other location, and I went to the, uh, the guard there. And so she's like receptionist acting as the guard. Like she had, I don't know, she, I don't know, she probably was the, the CEO and the janitor and maintenance and everything else. But she, she was doing so much stuff. But uh, so I walk up and I was like, hey, uh, here's the card. I'm supposed to meet her here today for an interview. And she said, well, the interviews are at the other location. And I was like, well, yeah, but we had discussed earlier that we were going to meet here. And so. Um, I'm already trying to hand her the USB. It was like, I was really in a hurry. I left my resume printed at home. Uh, I said, I don't have enough time to go down and get it printed off. I was like, is there any way you can print this out? You know, basically trying to hand it to her. And she did her due diligence. No, we can't plug in USB. We don't even have internet access here. And I was like, are you sure you can't? And uh, she's like, no, I can't. I was like, but it would really help me out. And it was basically trying to lay it on her desk. 
but uh, she she wasn't going for that. And so um, Tim and Drew were working on the back door. Um, I think they the shove knife or something wasn't working. I think yeah, from the previous gap. year they had uh, remediated that physical gap. So anyway, they come in through the front door with their fake badges on. Uh, they were just really generic contractor badges. And you probably could recreate that badge with a crayon. It was so it was basic. pretty bad. Uh, and so they come in. She's like, I need to see your badges. And Tim, as he's walking, he's like, it's right here. And she's like, no, I need to see your picture. And he's like, like that. <laughs> and it was being a jerk because he didn't want it. Uh, it was a badge that, that we had taken from the badge room of the main place. And it was... Uh, it was yeah, like, Drew had the one we had made. And I had, a, I had one that actually had a photo ID on it because they had a couple different types of contractor badges. Yeah, it, it was like a, it was an Indian. Yeah, it was an it Indian guy. Like it looks Tim. nothing like me. So, he had, he <laughs> so I'm like way back yeah. here looking at it. Yeah, and so while she's trying to do that, I start, like, ma'am, are you sure you can't print this off? You know, like, trying to distract. And so that gave Tim and Drew time to just walk past by and go into the building. So, I, you know, I thanked her, and she was like, well, you can fill out this resume, or this uh, application. I was like, sure, I'll do that. So I'm sitting on the couch, probably about 10 feet from her, listening. And, and sort, uh, very soon after Tim and Drew were out of uh, view, she starts calling people, hey, these two contractors just came in, and I don't feel right about it. So uh, she's like, I'm going to call so-and-so. She, she calls this person, hey, were you expecting, and then she read off the, the fake names that they provided, and the lady, of course, said, no, I have no idea who that is. So you see this, this sweet lady, I felt so bad, you see the sweet lady's face, face just like, changed. Oh, gosh, she's like, oh, I'm going to lose my job, you know, and, and the whole time I'm texting Tim, I was like, yeah, she's calling people, she's nervous about you guys. And so by this time, they're up on the second floor. They go straight, they go to a lady in her cubicle and say, hey, we're here testing network connectivity. This is a device, I just need to plug this in real quick to see. It'll probably take about an hour. It's a key logger. Just a hardware key logger, didn't trip AV or anything like that. Yeah. I'm like, oh yeah, I need to test your connectivity and we're running fiber and blah, 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 yeah, BSBS. BS. Yeah. And she's like, oh yeah, do what you gotta do and just slide your chest, the chair back. And I was like, oh, first, could you lock your system? Oh, yeah, so she locks her system, you know, you want to be secure. And then I plug in the, the USB key logger, and I was like, oh, could you log back in? Okay, sweet. <laughs> and it's funny, so during this time, uh, the, the receptionist slash security guard had made several calls. She had alerted uh, all the ladies that were currently working, because it's lunchtime. So you have five ladies out there, and they're like, okay, we're going to call everybody. We're going to go looking for these guys. And so I text him, I was like, they are actively searching, get out. And so, and, and find out later, right after Tim tells the lady, yeah, this is probably going to take about an hour, we'll be back. And it was one minute, and he literally says, okay, I think that's been that long enough. That should be enough, enough time, that should be good. And so he unplugs oh. it again, and then Drew, you know, they had had this whole story, like, yeah, we're here, we've been all through the building and stuff. And then right after that, Drew has to ask, oh yeah, where's the closest stairs? You know, so then She's she like, knew there? something was up. So they bolt out the stairs. Uh, and then about that time, Tim calls me and he's like, okay, dude, we're outside in the car. And I was like, oh, the interview's not here. It's tomorrow. And then he's telling me, like, did anybody see us? And I was like, no, I guess that was just a mistake on my part. I can come back tomorrow. It's fine. You know, making sure that the lady heard me. And so I went over and I thanked her for her time. And uh, I was like, I guess I'll see you tomorrow. And so we just walked and out. He walks and, down the street a couple blocks. We pick him up and, yeah. and we left. So all of that kind of happened in like 15 minutes. It was you know? super so fast. It yeah. was it was quick. We were able to get some domain credentials in, to one of their administrators. We found out later that this lady was actually pretty technical. And I was surprised that, you know, I'm testing your network connectivity by yeah, unplugging your keyboard. We're and running it fiber. You know, like, really, you're going to buy yeah. that one. Yeah. So you can so, never tell. Your bug out strategy is, it's always important to know how am I going to get out? How am I going to pick so and so up? You know, what are these roles? Especially if you have multiple consultants or, or pen testers on site, uh, utilize that. You know, oftentimes it's hard to just be one person there because you're not seeing as much. And so, you know, carefully plan what you're going to do, distractions and such. Um, you know, revisiting the scope and evidence. You know, revisit why are you there? What were you testing? Did you get uh, the names of the departments that you were able to compromise? Or, you know, did you write down stuff so you can reference it later when you're doing your report draft? Because sometimes I, I've been guilty of it. My adrenaline gets going and I'm in there and I'm doing my stuff and, you know, I'm, oh, I'm in here. And then I get out and I'm like, well, crap. 
I didn't take any pictures of this, or I didn't write this down. And then you end up, eh, well, yeah. just take my word for it. I got into this. Yeah, or, I, or you left your land turtle, and then you go back yeah, that too. two days later, and it's gone, and you've got to try and track it down, and you usually never can. So yeah. it's lost 50 bucks there. <laughs> right. So make sure you clean up. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, even at the end of it, is there a debrief or something like that? Okay, you've gotten in, you've done your thing, you've gotten out. Now call the point of contact or have somebody meet you so you can go back. <clears throat> Excuse me, and start uh, start cleaning up and making sure you pick up the things that you left. Yep. Um, even with that, uh, you know, other than the the land turtle, the keys, you know, I could have easily just kept those security guard keys, but that would have been horrible for the the client because they're not able to lock the facility up at 6 p.m. when she told me, or they're not able to do this or that. So it's important that you return these things. You've proven your point. Um, you know, proof of concept is is you know sometimes you want to go above the proof of concept and actually execute but always weigh uh, whatever it is as far as the scope goes and, and whatever's agreed upon between you and the client yeah and something else I want to mention too is outside of you know the covert stuff where you're trying to see what you can do without getting caught afterwards we always like to have uh, an employee that's well known that can actually escort us through every level so we can go through and we can take our time and and go through our, our methodology and our checklists and look at the locks and, and look at the physical gaps and anything else that we could identify. Uh, that way we can let them know, hey, we found this. Because like Tim said, when your adrenaline is high and you're you know, uh, trying to go through there and not get caught, you're going to overlook things or you're going to forget certain things. So we always plan to have a, uh, a guided walkthrough after each assessment so that we can have time to really look at things so that the client gets the full value of the assessment and there's not any huge, you know, low-hanging fruit that was overlooked. And even looking at this, seeing what their camera placement's like, you know, are you able to get in without being on the camera? Or where, do you know where their cameras are, their sensors and such? Uh, taking a look at that as well. So whether it's a walkthrough or it's done covertly, um, you know, these are things to keep in mind. Yeah, and uh, something else too, if you're not, if part of it is to not be recorded, and the client has given you permission, which this rarely happens, where they can say, oh yeah, if you need to, if you need to de destroy something or cut a wire or whatever, buy an arctic laser, those the, you know, the ones that can pop balloons, and uh, you can point that at a camera and usually burn it out. The and, older and cameras useless. with the tubes. Yeah, yeah so uh, the, the uh, closed circuit cameras. So there, so there are things like that to consider too, if uh, not being seen or recorded is part of the assessment. <clears throat> Don't go in wearing masks or anything like that. It's probably a bad idea. Or clown masks, especially lately. Yeah. Unless Dave Kennedy's there. And you, wanna, <laughs> you wanna troll Dave Kennedy to wear a clown mask. So security culture is greater than annual training. Um, you know, we were talking about earlier, these people that, that do let us plug these things in or scan badges or give us keys. Uh, it, depending on how you're doing your physical security or security guards, that person, I guarantee, is never going to do that again once you tell them, hey, you did this or that. So we like to tell people, you know, you don't have to fire them because yeah, some please people don't fire will. People because of us. Yeah, they'll go to the extreme and be like, all right, this person's got to go, they screwed up. Well, that kind of training is a little more effective than taking an annual point and click uh, quiz where they're just control Fing their security. Uh, policies and procedures and oh yeah there's that there's that okay I'm good I scored an 80 percent on my security awareness training yeah and everyone remembers everything they read through uh, PowerPoint trainings right so it, you know the security awareness training is more it needs to be more robust uh, how do you do that you can do it through you know tests like this and have follow-ups uh, you know Brent and I do a, a security awareness training it's kind of like a hacker Q&A we'll, we'll go and we'll have tools and such and We'll go through things. Oh, yeah, here's some of the techniques. Here's how we do some things. Yeah, here's a um, Wi-Fi pineapple. Here's, a here's rubber, what this you know, looks like. The tools that we use so they can say, oh, well, that's, that's cheap. Anybody can buy that? All right. Well, or that's what really cool. And, I didn't know that yeah. happens. And know? that's way more engaging and memorable than a very boring, uh, you know, PowerPoint survey type thing. So uh, you don't have to be paranoid about, you know, don't have to, you know, there's a thief behind every bush or whatever the saying is. But you do need to be aware. You need to teach. You need to teach your employees because they're also a line of defense. If they see something that it feel, it looks out of place or feels out of place, teach them that it's okay to go and ask someone a question. It's okay to go up and say, uh, "Sir, can I see your badge?" And if uh, it's a fake badge, or, or what are you doing here? What department are you with? 
that it's okay to ask those questions. And then make sure that they know that if something is off, they know that where to escort the person to or who to call to have them escorted. So you, know, you don't have to be super paranoid, but you do need to teach them to be alert and that it's okay to question. Because what happens is you get into this daily grind and security guards get bored. I mean, we were talking about a lady knitting a, a blanket. And she made a lot of progress too. It was, it was, nice it was about as big as I was already. So, but she was knitting a blanket. Now I mean, we've seen people dozing off of their own Facebook or their whatever. You know, so it's important that that they're aware. Not even just the security guards, because it can't just be that one person or whoever's on duty. It's got to be an employee culture. It's got to be a thing where you're not afraid when you're going in and somebody's following close to you and piggy piggybacking in. Because honestly, that's how we get in most of the time. It's just tailgating or piggybacking, especially around lunchtime or you know when there's a lot of high uh, volume traffic coming in and out of the building. It's easy to do that because nobody pays attention to the sound of the the proximity reader or or the the color of the light that dings on it or whatever or, so you can just or have they're a, on their way to lunch they yeah. don't care they just want to get to lunch or your hands are full the old you know the old oh my hands are full help me and they let you in and it's um, great when your hands are full with pizza boxes because they're like oh we don't want to get in this guy's way of all the hungry people waiting for pizza so they'll open the door right away which just segues into you know hackers don't care how hard your network is if they can just walk in uh, hand the employee a cup of starbucks and ask for passwords uh, this happened uh, the, the facility that I was at, it was a satellite location, so there was only a couple people that worked in there. Um, I made up a fake corporate badge using the employee brand, or the, the company branding uh, in a picture or whatever, and they didn't even have badges. But I went there, and I, it was super early, so I went by Starbucks. I knew that there would probably be a couple people there, so I grabbed a tray of Starbucks coffee. And I go up to the door, and I've got my laptop bag and everything, trying to get in. They let me in. I was like, oh, yeah, I'm just here. I need to test network connectivity. I use that a lot because it works. Yeah, everyone thinks their network is always so slow. Yeah. Well, it, is, it typically is, too. When you ask, oh, you have any network issues or like, is your oh, phone yeah. dropping? Oh, yeah, it sucks. I mean, it's slow. And well, we're taking care of that. And then they start feeling like you're there for them. And so I sat there and I gave them some coffee. And then we start talking and joking about coffee and all this stuff. And I actually had like a Dropbox uh, plugged in, was able to connect to it wirelessly that evening and then do my thing. So always, uh, you know, don't, don't always be skeptical of people's intentions, but there's policies and procedures in place for reasons. They're not just something to annoy you and bug you every year. And if you have security guards that are dedicated to physical security, their sense of awareness needs to be higher than all the awareness of your network admins and your cleaning crew and stuff like that, because they're the ones that you're paying to do this job. And I'm not, you know, again, we're not beating up on security guards so much as to, you know, just making sure clients are doing their due diligence and making sure they have quality coverage, uh, whether it's a monitoring or it's, it's a physical body on, on the site. Yeah, and something I like to uh, suggest, too, is, well, how do we make this part of the culture? So something you can do is maybe let employees or even the security guards know, hey, this week we're going to be doing some testing, you know, internal testing. Uh, and if you catch someone that's doing something they're not supposed to, like coming in the building that doesn't belong there, your name gets entered in a drawing for a gift card or something like yeah, that. Incentivize. Yeah, yeah, just incentivize. And I know that might sound kind of cheesy, but, you know, hey, it's free money, so why not? So that's just, you know, an idea to help kind of make that more part of the culture. Because so. what's going to be bigger, you know, a Starbucks gift card or a compromise where someone actually does happen? Because that, that uh, mentality happens, too, because you get so... Uh, just invested in, oh, this is how it is. This yeah. is how things, this is the daily grind. I've worked here for 15 years and I haven't seen any issues. Plus, you know? they, plus they get awarded immediately. You know, hey, good job. Yeah. Congratulations. So, and it's a good morale booster as well. So minimum baseline configurations, does that include disabling uh, media? Can they read write to things? Uh, you know, if that key logger, if we were to plug it in, uh, you know, how are things, how can you have these these controls in place to prevent that kind of thing. You know, why is it automatically recognizing this new network adapter when I plug in my LAN turtle? Well, you know, well, because they're not hardening these systems. And a lot of times the laptops, people work from home, so they don't want to do that. But there's also that internal risk of people reading and writing to SD cards or, or USBs or whatever and then taking it home with them. I mean, I think NSA, that recent thing, is, is kind of a, an eye-opener, right? Taking stuff home that you shouldn't be. Because some people do that without even, you know, telling people, right? So I think uh, that's important, clean desktop policy, or clean desk policy. Uh, again, we mentioned writing down passwords. Other than writing down passwords and putting them under your monitor and things, um, you know, people use files. People still have hard copies of sensitive data. 
especially if they're, they're processing PHI or PCI or anything like that, that background checks, you know, we've, we've there's been a couple times where we've been able to pull off um, folders that are sitting on these employees' desks where they're out of the office, either on vacation or they're wrapped up the day or they're on lunch, and it's just sitting there, and there's all these scanned passports and stuff like that, and it's like, are you, are you serious? Yeah, just out on the open, not in a locked cabinet or anything, so. Yeah, so it's important that you put that, that stuff away, yeah. Yep. So, um, again, as I mentioned earlier, you want to remind security guards, like, what your security policy is. Make sure that they understand that it's never okay to hand over your keys to anyone, you know, for starters. Let's just start the most obvious thing. And then also uh, check IDs that you want to verify people going in, uh, that they just know what their due diligence should be, that they understand the expectations. A uh, security guard can make, often make a huge difference in your security. They're the first barrier. You know, we've reiterated this again and again. You know, that's your first line of defense as a, as a person. So it's important that, that they're doing their job. Yep. That you're not just worrying about, oh, how hard is it to get into here or here? Well, it doesn't matter if you're gaining physical access to the system where you can just take it and, you know, walk into the, CS, the CISO's office because you're doing uh, patches or whatever it was that Brent had used. You know, it's, 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 these things happen. You know, they're happening. In, uh, in InfoSec as pen testers, but you know you know they're probably happening in, uh, in real life too, where people come in and they want to steal stuff. Yep. Um, you know, the shredder bins too, I think we kind of touched on a little bit, but there was a shredder bin one time. They had like a old crappy commercial master lock. Yeah, it was a master lock number three. Huge shredder bin, it was like tough. But they got this tiny It made that lock. sound too, actually. It did, yeah. We were trying to push it out and stuff like that, but they had a lock on it. It's like, well, let's just open this lock. And so you're bypassing those weak, uh, weak locks. It doesn't matter how tough your, your little bin is if, if you're using that. Again, you know, there was another time uh, where we found a shredder bin, and on the side, it was for the forklift to, to lift it, so it had holes in the side. Well, one guy on our team had little arms, so he was like shoved his arm in there, and we called it a... I think PII bingo or whatever. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but he, like, he shoved it see in. See what there, you can get this time. Pulled out tons of like sensitive data. Yeah, and the uh, hilarious thing is, we realized later the guy that stopped Tim earlier and was like, it just ripped his badge and then walked away. Uh, the guy with a really interesting nickname that we gave that I can't say. Uh, we ended up going through and finding out that we got a hard copy of his driver's license and specifically put like that in the copy. report yeah. uh, with his name on it to kind of, you know, troll him a little bit. But it's not a get you thing, too, though, right? Yeah. It's not like, ha-ha, we got you, we were able to do this or that, because you want them to, to fix it. You don't want them to be mad. These guys always come in here and cost us money or, or this and that. Well, yeah. we're here to help. We're not, you know, auditors. As pen testers, we're there to, to say, hey, here are your vulnerabilities. Let's talk about how we can fix it, yeah, whether it's physical or technical. Help us help you, I guess is the way you could say it. So I know we're uh, getting short on time here. So Just another slide, yeah. It doesn't matter uh, how great your electronic controls are if you can bypass them. I mean, this is just stupid. You know, why even have a lock there? Uh, and we see things like this all the time. Uh, like we're talking about the brand new dimple locks, but yet it just took a, a simple shove knife to open the server room door in under a second. And the gaps between the doors there, it's like, you know, they don't have the strike plates or they've got the yeah. plates wrong, it's up too high or too low. Yeah, so there's, just make sure that, uh, that your physical controls are in place so that you don't have, you know, fun stuff like this. Uh, gaps under doors, again, talked about the under the door tool with the lever handles or uh, the crash bar tool. And there's so there, there's so many things that are cheap and available to anyone that they could bypass so many things. So you got to really make sure that you're paying attention to these things. So I've seen a, I've seen a couple of different data centers like this too, where I don't know how they got past whatever compliance or standards they're using, but they don't have the floor to ceiling walls. But they've got these awesome like uh, two factor authentication, you know, electronic controls. And then you go around and then you climb up and push the drop ceiling and then, oh, look at that. And you're over it. I'm over this wall. Why isn't there some kind of intrusion detection system or a trip that's going to alert when somebody's doing this? Or a fence or something to yeah. block it. So. so always make sure that you're, you're considering these things, you know, especially those of you that, that do hire uh, these companies and such. Uh, make sure they're testing for stuff like that, uh, depending on the scope. Yep. So I know we've covered a lot of information, and uh, that's basically it for our talk. 
If anybody has any questions or anything, we'll be over here. Please come see us and talk to us, and more than happy to answer your questions. Thanks, guys. Thanks, everyone.